Hi, if you watched my first video, you know that I recently bought a mini sewing machine for crafts. And the machine I got does a real running stitch. And so before I started using it on paper, I want to see how it does on uh, cloth because, you know, I might want to use this for quick repairs on clothing and stuff. And so I made this little mini dust cover for my little tiny sewing machine. There it is. And this was really easy to make. Sorry, I've got some fabric in there helping it hold the shape. Uh, it was very easy to make and I will walk you through the process and then we're going to make one for my daughter's little tiny machine. So for mine, I had uh, these 10 by 10 quilting squares. They're really lovely. Look at these ones. They're just gorgeous colors. And I'm, I don't know where I bought them. I'm kind of thinking maybe I got them at, uh, oh golly, that store that just went out of business Tuesday morning. I think that's where I might have bought them. But then I'm not sure because they don't, yeah, I think I did get them at Tuesday morning looking at the price tag. Anyway, these, like I said, are 10 by 10. And I used four of the 10 by 10s. And then I used one of a contrasting 10 by 10. So I guess that makes a total of 10 by 10, five 10 by 10 pieces to make this. What I did was, first of all, I had to sew two pieces together because I really needed a piece of fabric that was going to measure about 19 inches. So I sewed two of them together and all my seaming, you know, took care of the measurements for me. And then I took the contrasting, which you'll see in a minute, and I just folded it in half. And then I laid it on uh, my piece of fabric where I wanted the pocket, put the wrong side of the other piece of fabric on top and sewed it up. But I'm gonna show you that process now, just making a different one. When I was done, I simply glued lace on it. I did not sew the lace on it because I thought that might be just too many layers. And I wanted a little pocket here so that I can keep my presser foot, not my presser foot, my, uh, oh, you know, foot pedal and my AC adapter in here. So keep it all together. So let me show you the machine we're going to be making it. This is my daughter's little tiny craft machine. Hers does chain stitch. And so what we're going to do is we're going to make a cover for hers. On the first one, I used lace to sew the, or I sewed on lace by hand, and I used this to close the sides. With hers, because hers is narrower than mine, I'm thinking I am not going to do that step. So let me show you what I did. I took two pieces of fabric. I bought a fat quarter, and it was 16 inches by 10 inches, and here it is. And I have taken it and I have pinned it right sides together. And then I took another piece of fabric. I'm going to unpin it and show you. I took a contrasting piece of fabric because you're not going to have enough fabric in your uh, fat quarter. This one measures 7 by 10 inches. 7 by 10 inches. I just folded it in half. So it's now three and a half by 10. And I want the right sides out. I'm going to take that piece and I'm going to put it on my fabric right at the bottom. And then I'm gonna pin it in place. And you don't sew over your pins. That's not a good idea. So what I do is I put my pins far back and then I will remove them as I stitch up to those edges. Basically, I just want it to hold that pocket in place for me. Okay, so I have pinned that. And then I pinned the rest, so I have two wrong sides on the outside, right? My right sides are all on the inside. Then I need to leave a starting point and a stopping point because I'm gonna to have to turn this all inside out. So these two pins are facing this way, just to show me I wanna start here. 
the first thing I want to do is sew the pocket down. And then I'm going to sew all the way up to the top, over and down to this pin. That's going to leave me quite a wide opening. I probably don't need an opening that wide, but that's what I'm going to do. So I will get my machine out and we will start sewing it. Now with these little machines, I have learned quite a bit. Actually, I'm going to start my pockets up here. I think I'm going to, because of the way I pinned it, I'm just going to start down here and sew around. I don't think it's really going to matter that much. So I'm lifting up my presser foot and I'm going to put it down right near that pin. I'm going to lower my presser foot and I'm going to remove that pin. Remember, like I said, you do not want to sew over any pins. And then I'm just going to start sewing. And this machine is noisy. No getting around it. Oh, and it has a light too. Let me see if I can turn on the light. Turn on the machine. Ah, my light seems to not work. Okay, that's fine. I do have to plug in my Okay, that was unexpected. Ah, okay. Here we go. Put control in charge. When I get to the edge of my fabric, I just do a nice stitch. I'm going to pause with the needle down into the fabric. You did see me use the hand wheel there. I'm going to pull out my pin. I'm going to lift my presser feet, turn my fabric, lower my presser feet, and sew some more. <laughs> Coming close to the other side. I'm removing my pin before I get there. Okay, this time my needle did stop in the down position, so I'm going to lift my presser foot, turn, and sew. It is kind of hard to keep a straight line. Okay, I am approaching my pocket, so I'm going to put my finger on the edge of the pocket. I want to put my finger right there on the edge of the pocket to hold it down so it doesn't get buckled or anything. And then just continue, continue sewing. I think I'm going to slow it down just a little bit so I have more control. That's just me being chicken. I've gotten to the edge. Stop with my needle in the down position. Lift up my presser feet. And then turn. And you notice I put my pin far enough back that I really don't need to pull it because it's not in any danger of getting under the, the uh, feet. I've come to the edge. I'm gonna stop with my needle in the down position. Oh, I think I need to do one more stitch because I'm not quite as close as I was on the other side, so I'll just do that manually. Now I am sewing on the selvage, so it's gonna be a little rough for the machine. And I'm going to sew Oh, I think approximately to this pin here. So I'm going to have to remove this pin when I get to it. And then I'm going
going to make sure my needle's raised. I am going to take anything, just a pencil in this case. I'm just going to pull the thread down from by the tensioner gadget like that. And then I'm just going to pull my machine out, lifting the pressure foot. I'm not pulling my machine out, I'm pulling my fabric out. And then I'm just going to cut my fabric, not my fabric, my threads, but I'm going to cut them so that I have a couple long pieces because I do want to be able to tie these in a knot. So there we have that. And at one point my light decided it would turn on. So I'm just going to go ahead and remove my pins. Poking myself in the process. All right, now I have these here. I have one thread on each side. All I'm going to do is try Yeah, okay, so I pulled on my thread. It made the other bottom thread come up a little bit. I'm gonna try to catch that loop, give it a pull. So now both my threads are on the top and I'm just gonna tie a knot to hold it in place. This machine has no back stitching capability. Um, if you wanted to, you could turn the whole project around and then stitch backwards. If you really want to know how to do that, I'll show you in another video. Just let me know. And then here, my starting thread, I did not leave a long enough thread. So this is going to be hard. Uh, the top thread's very short. The bottom thread's long enough. So maybe that'll help me. I'm just going to turn it. And tie another knot. And this will secure my threads in place and I shouldn't have any problem with them pulling out. Oops. I just have a problem picking them up with my fat fingers. There we go. All right, now I'm just going to cut those off like I did the last ones. And now I'm gonna turn my project right side out. And this will be fun because you will see that the pocket is sewn in place perfectly. If you don't want to do that step of tying the threads in place, oops, I got a pin. You don't have to because we're gonna come along and top stitch the whole top of it. But I don't know, I just kind of like it to be more secure. You could also use um, some kind of thread glue or fabric tack or something. Okay, I'm just pulling out the edges and here we go. This part has the pocket. And there's our pocket. How cute is this? going to poke out those edges. You could use um, anything to poke out those edges. I'm just using my finger, but if you have one of those little pokey tools that's made for sewing, you could use that and have nice sharp edges. And look, there we go. Isn't that cute? This makes approximately, well, let's measure it, find out exactly. This makes a pocket that is one, two, three and a quarter inches. All right. So the next step is I'm going to take this and I'm going to press it because I want it to look nice. So I'll take it to my ironing board, I'll press it, and then when I come back, I'm just going to top stitch all the way around. You don't have to top stitch the bottom of the, now you do not top stitch the top of the pocket, okay, because that would sew it closed. But you can top stitch along the bottom here if you want. I think I might do that. It'll just close the pocket a little. Or I'm not sure, I might just top stitch along the long side, this side, 
and that side and call it good. We shall see. Oh, and you know also when I do now, I will show you how to tack it down with the machine you're stitching so that you don't have to try to tie those little knots. Okay, so I have pressed my piece of fabric here and at the edges that did not get sewn in, you see I only used about a fourth uh, inch seam. I just folded them in and now when I do my top stitching, they're going to get sewn right in there. And I thought about it and I think I'm going to start my top stitching close to the top of the pocket, but not do the pocket. At least that's my idea for right now. That's what I did on, on the one I made for mine. Because I wasn't sure that I liked the look of the white thread going down here. I could change my thread, but I don't want to. <laughs> All right, so here we go. Got my little machine in place. I'm going to put my needle as close as I can to here. And then I'm gonna sew up this edge, come across, sew down this edge, turn, sew down this edge, and I'm going to stop as close to the pocket as I possibly can. All right, I'm down by my pocket. My needle is down. Now I'm going to show you how to back tack. So I'm going to lift this needle up. I'm going to turn my project all the way around. I can do this because it's a tiny little project. Put my pressure foot down and now I'm just going to sew along the sewing that I've already done. And my machine does not, there we go, doesn't work it. Okay, I've sewn about six or so stitches. I'm going to do that one more time to work on the way back. I'm just sewing over the stitches I've already sewn. And now I'm done with this side. I can lift it up. Remember, I need to pull down next to the tension rod. So I get some slack because this isn't like a big machine that automatically takes the tension off. Oh, and I have a little bit of a tangle. There we go. This one I can cut off close because I did back tack it. And this is what we have so far. And it really doesn't look bad. All right, so now I have to deal with these threads. And I think this time I'm gonna see if I can pull up on the back thread and bring my front thread through to the back. Yes. And then I'm just gonna knot them. Here I am, I'm going to try to put some lace on the pocket. So I was looking through the laces that I liked the best. And I found one that had hearts on it, and it was very, very pretty. And so I decided that I was going to use that. And you'll see it in just a minute. Here we go. So that's the lace that I thought would look pretty on it. And I'm trying to figure out how to make it fit exactly right so that I don't have to cut through one of the motifs. Because I just don't like it when I have to cut through a motif. Anyway. I decided how to cut it, and then I decided that I should use fabric tack like I did on mine. And I just used the fabric tack to hold it into place. I did not drench it in the glue. I just used um, nice little dots of glue on the motifs and along the top to hold it in place. I'm just playing with the snaps here. I've glued the uh, lace in place, and I think it looks very nice. I think my daughter's going to be very happy with this. <laughs> 